Okay, purple belts, we're almost done. We have trunk rotation stability. This is a fun one. So you're trying to do opposite arm, opposite leg. It's gonna be our main focus for this one. So we've already kind of touched on it last time where we did the, uh, the shoulder taps, moving the arms, and then kind of adding that arm and leg. We're gonna go back to the traditional bird dog position. So you're on your hands and knees. So this is what they call a suspended spine position because it, it's like a drawbridge. You know, your spine is just holding where the legs and hips are attached. So the same thing here. Focus on this part. Hey, we're gonna break it down into two parts. First, she's just going to keep everything nice and stable where she has it, and she's just gonna raise one arm over her head. There, can everything stay stable here? Good. Now she's gonna do the other leg. Go straight back. Perfect. Did this arch? No. Now we're going to do the combination of the two. So she's going to extend both, and then she's going to touch elbow to knee. Perfect. It's okay if it rounds here. We're trying to see if there's mobility there also. And go back out. Perfect. Stability. Go back in. Mobility. Remember, when you breathe, open up. Breathe in. Then you're collapsing everything. Breathe out. Okay? So do like five to ten one side, five to ten the other side. Okay? Keep it nice, slow, and controlled. Okay, so we've already done the chop where you're on your knees, like what they call a half kneeling position where we're doing the chops and the lifts. Now you're transitioning to a split stance or a staggered stance position, scissor stance, whatever you want to Google, same type position. Feet are staggered. Remember, engage those feet. Big toe up, get that arch, grip the ground with the feet. Now think of centering out the pelvis, engaging that core. This one, since we have the right leg forward and it's coming from the bottom, this one is your lift. Keep everything nice and tight, bring it to your chest, and push up and out. Good, come back down, there you go. You're trying to keep everything nice and tight. This is trying to rotate you hard back into the left. You're trying to stop that. So remember, all about breathing. When you come back down, breathe out. When you come up, breathe in. You're opening up the chest, okay? 10, 15 reps. Switch sides. Okay, now we did the lift. Now it's time to chop. So you switch your stance, get those feet engaged, square up the feet, engage the pelvis. You're gonna come from the top, bring it to the chest, breathe out and push down just like that. Now you can do this with that tricep um, rope thing or you can use what they call a, a cook bar. It's like a bar PVC pipe. It's about this long and it has a little hook on the end. You attach the, the cable wire to the end of the hook and it looks a little different. You bring it to your chest, but then you push out and try to straighten that top arm normally. If you're doing a lift, it's you pull up and then you straighten that bottom arm. So it's a little bit different movement. Really love it. It's hard. If your gym has it, definitely try it out. Now we're going to have carrying exercises. We're going to break down three of them. Farmers carry, waders carry, overhead carry. So the first one we're going to do is just a normal farmer's carry. Now I specifically like a single arm farmer's carry because when you have weight in one arm, you're going to have to really work the core and the pelvis on the other side to stabilize. Versus having two, you're really just working on grip strength and shoulder strength and really compression the shoulder or the spine. So think of that risk versus reward in exercises. If you have one on one side, you can't carry too much weight. We want to have a medium weight where it's a good workout, of course, but I don't want you walking kind of like this carrying a thing. You want your shoulders to be stable. So what she's going to do is try to keep you, keep your feet. Try not to duck walk or do any kind of funky walk. Take your time and walk straight if you can. So Haley's just going to go. It's not rocket science here, people. Keep your shoulders back, core tight, then turn around, come back. Nothing crazy. All you're doing is doing a single arm farmer's carry. Next one is a waiter's carry. There again, you can hold it just right here in that triangle area of the forearm. You just let it sit there. All you're gonna do now is walk with it. Keep the shoulder back and engaged the whole time. Don't let your posture around pull when you do it. Chin down, head back, core tight, and walk. You wanna make this harder, you have some shoulder stability problems or even some wrist issues. You're gonna flip it upside down and do the bells up position and then try to move. You really need to squeeze that handle hard because if not, it's gonna flop around on you. 
okay? Last but not least is your overhead carry. So same thing, make sure that wrist is nice and straight, arm should be able to go straight up overhead, core tight. With this one, do not extend or arch the back. Keep that core engaged. Sometimes I, the first few feet, I just kind of hold my, my core just to make sure I'm not arching. Okay, good. And come back. Perfect. Now, there again, if you want to make it harder and work more stability, flip it upside down and do the bells up position. So these are the three different types of carries. Personally, I like to try to break down some of my workouts on a pull day, a push day, and then like an opposite arm, kind of transition rotational day. So my pull day, I have like a deadlift, back, pull-ups, anything I'm pulling toward my body. For some reason, I like to do farmer's carry because I've already gripped something with my deadlift. Then I have a push day. I typically do like a front squat, push-ups, bench, military press, whatever you're doing pushing-wise. I like to do a waiter's carry. Then I like to start doing lunges, cross crawl, bird dogs, anything that's going to do opposite arm, opposite leg, chops, lifts, that type of stuff. I'll do my overhead carry, but then I'll add the lunge component in there to it. So just kind of break it up, um, play with them. You'll find one that you're pretty good at and other ones that you're pretty bad at. So I would say you need to focus on the ones where you're weakest. Enjoy those carries.